gentlemen, uh, it's already 10 o'clock. Uh, to all of those who are already present, maraming salamat po for joining our committee hearing. So this public hearing of the Committee on Trade, Commerce and Entrepreneurship joined with the Committees on Ways and Means, Social Justice, Welfare and Rural Development and Finance is hereby called to order. I think uh, some senators will be joining us uh, in a while, especially uh, Senator Sher Sherwin Gachalian. Okay, so in the meantime, uh, may I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge our resource persons present for today where we will be hearing uh, seven measures with mo more or less different uh, subject matters. So, so on seven different subject matters. So, Ms. Jingle, Kon Kon Alam, please uh, uh, acknowledge our resource persons. Maraming salamat, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Senate. Uh, for today's public hearing, we'll have resource persons from the following government agencies. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Attorney Ruth Castello. Ms. Weya And Ms. Weya Bohol. From the Department of Health, we have Ms. Flor Moraleja, Ms. Minerva Vinluan, Mr. Mike Allen Aguinaldo. From the Department of Agriculture, we have Under Secretary Ernesto Gonzalez, Dr. George Culaste, Attorney Armand Probarde Jr., Mr. Federico Lasiste Jr., Ms. Lenny Pexon, Police Colonel Ab from the we also have Police Colonel Abrenica and Police Colonel Edwin Valles. From the Department of Education, we have Ms. Assistant Secretary Alma Ruby Torrio and Mr. Abraham Abanila. From the Department of Energy, we have Mr. Milo Lila. From the Department of Justice, we have State Council Dave Florence Fatalia, State Council Nancy Luzano, State Council Margaret Robles, from the Department of Information and Communications Technology, we have Attorney Frederick Espinosa and Mr. Ariel Rodriguez. From the Bureau of Customs, we have Attorney Jeannie Apostol. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Ms. Maria Belinda Caraan and Ms. Ellen Joy Suficiencia and Ms. Charina De Vera Yap and Mr. Christian Oliver Valdea Villa. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Mr. Vicente Jan Penamora, Attorney Oliver Leonardo, and Attorney Jonathan Pancreacrius Pagirigan. From the Philippine Postal Corporation, we have Ms. Maria Lourdes Rifareal and Attorney Joselito B. Gonzalez. Hello, From the National Privacy Commission, we also have Attorney... Erlene Vanessa Lumanog. From the Philippine National Police, we have Police Colonel Cosme Abrenica. From the University of the Philippines, we have Professor Oliver Reyes and Attorney Maria Ofelia Liano. From the non-government sector, we have from the Ad Standards Council, we have Attorney Rafael Kalinisan. From the Direct Selling Association of the Philippines, we have Mr. Joey Sarmiento. From the Laban Consumer, we have Attorney Victoria Mario de Magiba. From the Nationwide Association of Consumers Incorporated, we have Mr. Jose Pepito. From the Philippine Retailers Association, we have Attorney Paul Santos and Ms. Ana Marie Minda. And we also have from the Citizen Watch Philippines, Mr. Vijan Dizon. That's all for now. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you, Madam Committee Secretary. So the chair acknowledges the presence of Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Thank you, Senator Gachalian, for being with us. I know you are also conducting a technical working group on your work as a committee chair also. So with the presence of at least two senators, we, we have a quorum for today's hearing. Hence, we will now proceed to hear the following bills. Uh, Senate Bill Number 756, the Enhanced Consumer Act. 1293, one uh, a bill amending RA 7394 or the Consumer Act. 1758, uh, amending the Electronic Commerce Act. Senate Bill Number 520, the Anti-Pyramiding Act. 659, Used Car Lemon Act. 1376, Senior Citizens Fraud Education Act. And uh, Senate Bill Number 1677, Food and Grocery Delivery Services Protection Act. Okay, so these are all uh, different uh, topics, different subject matters. Okay, so this is what happened, no? So when we scheduled our hearing, the Senate session was scheduled at uh, 3 p.m., but now I think we have uh, scheduled the session at 1.30 p.m., 1.30 p.m. So uh, let's just try our best to be uh, efficient and we'll end uh, around 12 noon and to give, to give uh, me time and Senator Sherwin time to prepare for our session and uh, try. I need to travel to the Senate. Okay, so okay, so let us start. Uh, let's start with Senate Bill Number Seven Fifty Six, the Enhanced Consumer Act, filed by Senator Recto, and and in the process also we can uh, join. Uh, in the discussion, Senate Bill Number 1293, uh, filed by Senator Marcos, because it also amends the uh, Consumer Act. So, any comment on the on 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 any of the two bills? Uh, uh, at Attorney yeah. Attorney J. Kerubino of my office will uh, give us the essence of the set of the said two bills uh yes uh these bills seek to amend and improve the current consumer act by including new punishable and prohibited acts mandating product labels in filipino or english mandating product information sources um, new advertising sales promotion promotions guidelines and uh providing additional penalties for certain acts uh maybe dp i can okay so the chair opens the floor for discussion in votes positions so kung, kung, uh, about dti uh you said castello uh, have you seen the, yes. the two bills have you seen the two bills uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we have already put forth our um, uh, uh, support and the further proposals to enhance the provisions of the draft, Mr. Chair. Uh, in, in writing, in writing, it's already with the committee? Yes, Mr. Chair, some we have discussed also with the committee, Mr. Chair, verbally. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. So... Is there any other discussion on the two bills? The chairman. Yes, Hello. Attorney Santos. No, Attorney Santos. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning. Uh, we we received notice of the hearing uh, just very recently, and uh, looking at the bill. Uh, we noticed uh, quite a number of improvements from the uh, from our RA 7394, which was enacted into law uh, 
way back in 1992. Um, while we, the, the, the changes here are notable, but we urge, but we urge the tenant, uh, Wait a minute, Attorney Santos. Uh, Comsec, do, do we have a an automatic uh, muting of uh, everybody else? Okay, can we do it? Okay, and then Attorney Santos will just un unmute himself. Okay, continue, Attorney Santos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, while while we are, uh, the effort is indeed laudable to improve uh, the current uh, consumer act with the Philippines to reflect the changes in consumer activity in the 30 odd years since uh, the law was uh, uh, enacted. Uh, although we believe that uh, the bill still, uh, we would like to suggest some, some more uh, changes to the, to the law, I mean, to the bill uh, that would balance out the interests of both uh, consumers uh, business and the government in this case. So we, if we refer to matters like tickets promotion, uh, price tagging, um, uh, ad advertising and promotion and so on, uh, that we would like to put forth uh, both in writing and we hope to be invited in a future technical working group where we can uh, discuss uh, our, our suggestions uh, at length, uh, Your Honor. Uh, thank you very much. So thank you, Attorney Santos. Uh, uh, the chair yeah. the chair reiterates the standing policy of the committee to welcome uh, position papers and other uh, comments uh, in writing from resource persons who are here present, and also from from those who are, who have not been able to attend our our hearings. Now you. Uh, the public is welcome to submit uh, position papers and other comments on any or all of the bills pending before the trade committee. So, tama po yun. So, we welcome this. So, any other comment on, on these two? The chairman. The chairman. I see, I see uh, Attorney Dibagiba and then Attorney... Si, 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 at, take a sarap. Uh, attorney Reyes of the UP lawyer. So, so Attorney Dimagiba first of Laban Consumer. Hi, good morning, Mr. Chairman. And uh, yes, uh, we fully support the uh, improvement of the Consumer Act of the Philippines through the bills filed by Senator uh, Marcos and, uh, and two other senators that are pending uh, consideration by the committee. In fact, Mr. Chairman, your your the deliberation now is very very much timely, considering that uh, in your counterpart the uh, House of Representatives, uh, your counterpart committee had also uh, endorsed uh, a revised Consumer Act of the Philippines. Uh, while here in the Senate, you call it enhanced, so uh, that's one area for Bicam <laughs> to to resolve whether you use enhanced or revised. In any event, uh, I went over the Enhanced Consumer Act, the increase in the penalties proposed, and uh, uh, what also we were able to crop in the House of Representatives. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think we should give priority to this particular bill, and uh, if we could schedule a technical working group as soon as possible, uh, better, so uh, we can really marry, we can marry and merge uh, uh, the two versions, uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate Committee on Trade and Industry. It's about time that we revisit the Consumer Act of the Philippines uh, having been enacted uh, more than 20 years ago and to cope with changes in behavioral, uh, behavioral activities of traders and businessmen as well as also this uh, uh, suddenly uh, a very improved electronic or online commerce in the retail industry. So we appreciate your committee putting this into a hearing today. So at least uh, at some point uh, uh, the two versions uh, would be synchronized. All 
for the benefit of the consumers. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Attorney, Attorney Reyes, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a brief observation with respect to the bill of Senator Recto, particularly the a revision of the definition of mass media to include the internet, mobile phones, and similar electronic devices. And um, while we understand the purpose for expanding this definition of mass media to bring it up to the times, uh, we just also like to, or I just like to mention that uh, because this may have constitutional implications because there are constitutional restrictions with respect to mass media and its ownership, any subsequent legislative definition of mass media uh, could potentially impact any future interpretation or application of those constitutional provisions with respect to mass media. So while um, I, I, what I would just suggest is that uh, perhaps that, um, you know, the, the, um, there be a sense of the Congress first as to how to precisely define mass media in light of the constitutional applications before um, enacting any legis any legislation that would statutorily redefine mass media um, and if perhaps a across the board definition if the Congress deems that warranted but I just like to point out there there would be constitutional implications in any statutory definition of mass media. Thank you. Has it, uh, hasn't the Supreme Court defined the term? Uh, not yet, Mr. Senator, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, there has uh, there's been no definitive uh, conclusion on the part of the Supreme Court, much less one which uh, takes into account the existence of the internet. So it may be a potentially controversial issue, Mr. Chair. Okay. Again, thank you for pointing that out. So in the technical working group before, before the actual TWG, so uh, my staff must be armed with some, I don't know, some working uh, definition based on, based on the history of the term, Siguro. Mass media, what is mass media? It's, it is a medium which uh, reaches uh, uh, many people and uh, not targeted. No, I think it's that's the concept. It's not targeted to to certain people, but to all as much as many as possible. Okay. So any other any other comments on the two bills? Uh, Attorney Ralph uh, Kalinisan, yes, sir. Uh, maganda umaga po, Mr. Chair. Uh, Attorney Ralph Kalinisan po from the Ad Standards Council. We just received notice of this hearing fairly recently. Um, since the Ad Standards Council has a, a partnership with the DTI and other regulatory bodies, since the advertising industry is a self-regulatory industry, uh, these bills have uh, a direct impact on the way we do work. Um, we will be submitting, Mr. Mr. Chair, our comments and our position paper on this matter. Uh, rest assured, though, that uh, we support the intent of the bill, and uh, per cursory reading uh, of these bills, uh, it is very laudable, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. The the authors would be happy. We will be happy to hear your uh, your comment, your feedback. Asige, so okay now. If there are no other comments here, we will schedule. Mr. Chair. Ah, sino to? Can you identify? Uh, from from DepEd. This is Alma Torio from DepEd po, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, DepEd. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we are ready to submit our position paper after after this meeting. And in our position paper, we manifest our support. Uh, and uh, we will also include the existing uh, programs and issuances that DepEd had undertaken in support to the proposed bill. We will also include the existing education competencies in our basic curriculum uh, that tackles the concept of the market and consumers. And for your consideration, Mr. Chair, we are ready to submit some uh, suggestions on the uh, various provisions of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, thank you. Of course, uh, th that would be very welcome. Sige. Uh, so we will, Jay, we will, we will conduct the TWG. We join the two bills na. Diba? Yes, one, sir. One, because they, they, they concern the two bills, although amending different sections of the same law, diba? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so, okay, so we will uh, organize one technical working group for the two bills. Uh, Senate Bill number 756 and Senate Bill number 1293. Okay, so, yes. and the committee will uh, notify those uh, who we will invite to the TWG. Okay, and also those, uh, they just make just make make the make the schedule also known so that those who want to be active in the TWG can volunteer to be active. Okay, yes. okay, so yeah, okay, that's what we do. Okay, we can we can now move on to the next uh, bill, Senate Bill Number Seventeen Fifty Eight. Uh, uh, Attorney Kerubin will uh, give us the gist of the bill. Uh Senate Bill 758 or the Amendments to the Electronic Commerce Act by Senator Marcos. This 17, bill is, 7, is it 758? 1758? 1758. 1758. Okay. This bill aims to recognize the validity of electronic notarization in accordance with the rules and regulations as may be determined by the Supreme Court. Okay. Yan po. Very short bill. Yes. A any comments on the bill? Uh, before we proceed, uh, Senator Lapid is uh, also with us, so the chair welcomes uh, Senator Lapid. We will hear his uh, bill next. Uh, any comment on the Mr. Bill, chair? Marcos, on ano ba to? This is the online notarization? No? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair. Sec Pacheco. Yes. I, sir, magandang uh, Mr. Chair. Good morning, po, uh, to the committee, sir. Um, sir, we'd like to um express the the support of the Department of Trade uh, on the bill filed by uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Sir, we recognize that there is a need to update the E-Commerce Act of 2000, which has been in existence for 20 years. Um, sir, uh, the bill um is also something that will align. Uh, we need to align our domestic law. With the UN uh, ECC or the Electronic Co Communications Convention, sir, and of uh, and we welcome this particular legislation to help um, strengthen and boost the growing digital economy of the Philippines, sir. Um, we are prepared to work with uh, the committee, sir, as we are working with the UP Law Center on on the proposed amendments to the to the um, e-commerce act, sir. And uh, and uh, we'd like, sir, that uh, we be given the opportunity to submit our our further amendments um, to this bill, sir. Um, basically, uh, Mr. Chair, um, we there are variances between the rules of recognition of electronic communications in the Electronic uh, Commerce Act as well as the Electronic Commerce Convention, um, uh, and we'd like to point out that this inconsistent that this uh, inconsistencies will be taken um, uh, will be um, uh, pursued with the legislation, sir. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. We support the bill amending the E-Commerce Act and would like to request the Chair's consideration for additional amendments that we will recommend um, as we are working with the UP Law Center on this matter, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. That, that, that would be most welcome. So your, 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 your ideas go beyond uh, Section <laughs> 8 pala, of uh, Section 8 of the E-Commerce e Act of 2000. Okay, so uh, it goes beyond that. Yeah. Kasi Sir, this bill is, is about that, eh? and then introduction of a new new section 9 and 10. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, good, sir, good. I see... Maraming salamat po, sir. Um, I, I see that uh, Attorney Oliver is also here. Uh, he, yes. They've been also working. Thank you po, Mr. Chair. Uh, sige, Attorney Reyes, please, Oliver. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, just like to echo what Asik Jim said about the necessity for the amendments to the e-commerce act in order to align with the un convention on electronic contracts uh we are actually prepared to submit by by today um the list of proposed amendments and uh, i've already reached out preliminarily to the uh comsec about this so um we do hope that uh these amendments would be formally considered uh we are also prepared to work with uh, Senator Marcos, uh, if that would be the um, 
if that would also be the preferred route. But I think that we are more or less aligned in the intention to update the e-commerce app to keep up with current practices and um, the enhancement of electronic notarization is uh, something, of course, that that would tremendously uh, benefit um, electronic commerce in general, and you know, especially during this time of the pandemic. So uh, we just again echo what Asik Jean said that uh, we do submit that there is a strong need to update the Electronic Commerce Act in order to align with the UN Convention, so that there would be no a deviation between cross-border transactions and domestic transactions, and we're prepared to submit that proposed list of amendments to that effect. That, Pajero, that, does your comprehensive draft on the e-commerce app also uh, touch on Section 8? Did you also did you also amend Section 8? Uh, not particularly, Your Honors, but we are... Uh, we have no objections to Section 8, uh, uh, to the proposed amendments to Section 8 as well, because our, actually, our proposed amendments are mostly, uh, oh, sorry, sir. Uh, uh, from JJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 from Attorney Dizini. <laughs> uh, Is he online, uh, JJ? Yes. Um, yung ano po, uh, JJ, sige, go, go ahead. I'm sorry, po. Yung Section 8 po will be touched because we're proposing an amendment on the electronic signature legislation po ah. to have a broader recognition of electronic signature. So it's it's right, ano po, right in touch po doon. And then, of course, we can also consider yung electronic motorization po. Thank you. Yes, oh, kasi yun yung purpose ni the Marcos Bill is all, is all about that, eh, yung on, on, online online or electronic notarization. So please, uh, please accommodate the concept and then... Uh, the committee shall await the, the submission by the UP Law Center and the DTI of the proposed comprehensive uh, amendments to the e-commerce app. And then we will have to go through this uh, process again. Okay, so we'll have to, we'll, uh, we will file it and then we'll, we, uh, it will most likely be referred to this committee. And then let's hold the hearing now on, on, the, on the specific uh, proposed amendments to the e-commerce act. Okay, so uh, Thank you. Attorney Vic. Uh, Attorney Pagdimagiba, yes, sir. All right, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pag naging batas yan, siguro I will go back to being a notary public. No? Anyway, uh, kaya lang, Mr. Chairman, what I know, maybe Attorney Reyes of UP Law Center can also comment. Uh, the rules on the licensing of notary public uh, is uh, with the Supreme Court under our rules of court. So maybe we should also involve uh, the judiciary in the crafting of an amendment of the e-commerce act, uh, particularly allowing electronic notarization. I guess maybe the law should uh, make a general reference uh, that uh, it shall amend. I don't know whether only the Supreme Court can amend the rules of court. So maybe Attorney Reyes, Attorney Gigi of uh, UP Lisonte can address uh, uh, this particular legal point. But uh, we support, we support uh, the initiative of Senator Marcos on digital notary public, especially during this time of the pandemic, where you don't really have to go to your notary public which I do now through my uh, paralegal and voluntary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, the, the, the present bill, uh, the Marcus bill, uh, refers to the rules of the Supreme Court. So, pero anyway, it, this will be incorporated in the comprehensive amendments to be proposed by the UP Law Center and the DTI. Okay, so hintayin po namin yun, ha, kasi ma, ano to, this uh, Senate Bill uh, 1758 will will in effect be stalled. No? We, we, will, we will not act on this because we would rather act on the comprehensive uh, amendments to the E-Commerce Act. Ganun po ang mangyari. Okay, so Hi, thank Mr. you. Chairman. Ah, yes. Chairman. Sino po to? Maybe, maybe, Mr. Chairman, Attorney D. Ah, yes, 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 sir. Attorney D. Maggie. Yeah, reaction lang do sa 
Uh, why should we go to the notification aspect when it can be done? It can it can proceed stand alone. I mean, uh, in any event, I think uh, whether you will like it or not, it will be the rules of court who will promulgate an amendment on the licensing of notary public. Maybe, Mr. Chairman, you can consider your your idea of installing this Senator Marcus bill and let it proceed. I think the the, the notary public people who are listening in your in the hearing would welcome very much the Senator Marcus bill. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. But uh, just uh, anyway, the uh, according to attorney uh, Oliver Reyes, they will be submitting it tomorrow. So I <laughs> think then, did I hear you correctly, uh, attorney Reyes, tomorrow, by tomorrow? Uh, we would be ready to submit uh, very promptly. Ah, okay. So yeah, so tignan natin how how comprehensive uh, the proposals are. Okay, so we, so we can marry the two para uh, one plenary discussion along on the e-commerce app. Okay, okay so uh, we will move on. So the uh, the action here is to await the submission to the committee uh, of the comprehensive amendments to the e-commerce app by the UP Law Center and the DTI. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Thank yes. you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, so, Mr. Chair. Sir, Oh, Senator Lapid is here, so let's take up his bill. Because very, this bill is also very timely. Uh, it's also about what is happening ngayon uh, with the, 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 the delivery, you know, no? the food service delivery riders now. Okay, who are who are being uh, who are being subjected to ano ba ito? Uh, fraud ba matatago ba tong fraud or sometimes uh, hoax no Ho hoax or or uh, mga mga tricks mga ganun okay so let's hear from the author if Senator Lapid has uh, an opening statement we are referring to Senate bill number 1677 uh, maraming salamat Mr. Chair uh, maraming maraming salamat sa iyo Chairman Coco Pimentel, Senador, at uh, sa mga kapwa ko, Senador, at uh, yung mga resource person, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, meron din po akong uh, opening statement, ay sasamit po at i-insert ko na lang. Yun nga po, ito po nga maraming salamat at tatakil itong uh, uh, Senate Bill uh, number 1677. Ito po ay napaka-importante uh, nito. So, uh, alam natin ang kamukha na banggit nyo, um, Sir Chair, na uh, napapanahon. At uh, yun nga, uh, kami nalulok sa ating uh, uh, mga consumer. At saka, lalong lalo na po itong mga driver na mga uh, crowd order, eh di naman pala tutuko mo. Order, kawawa naman. At uh, uh, yun nga, alos ikinuha yung ano, na peki sila. Eh, ititinda na lang ako sa mga kanto-kanto para mabili. Ang mukha kong numorder ng milk tea, kung hamburger man niya, kung ano mga pagkain niyan, siyempre napapanis po yan at nasisira. Hindi po kamukha ng mga electronics na kung o-order, pwedeng isole at hindi nasisira yon. Kaya, para kay Asek uh, Ruth uh, Castello, siguro po mabigyan ng pansin to uh, mga uh, uh, grab driver na natin, eh, kawawang-kawawa naman sila. Yung nag-aanap buhay ay kukunti lang kinikita. Alam ko naman po, may minimum charge na, na alam ko, 69 pesos yata araw at, at up at i-charge nila. Yun po, yun lang at, at maraming maraming salamat. Mabigyan ng pansin itong mga ano natin, grab driver natin na nag-deliver. Maraming salamat po. Mr. Chair, salamat. Salamat po, uh, Senator Lapid. Nakita ko nga ang petsa na pag-file nito, July 2020. So talagang uh, ito po ay parang sagot o reaction natin sa nakita natin mga problema no na uh, linoloko yung mga food service uh, delivery drivers so could, na, ang akala ko dati kasi advance akala ko yung nag-order advance payment yung pala ina-advance pala ng some ano pala some delivery service uh, providers required the, the drivers 
the riders oh. to advance, no? Oh. Oh, sana dapat ang marangot dyan, yung mga ano, may-ari ng Grab at saka yung Panda. Kasi kawawa pa ka ng sila ta, uh, yun nga, para i-complain natin sa DTI. Can, can, can we get the reaction of the DTI? DTI, the, sabi ni Senator Lapid, the USEC Ruth. Alam niyo ba itong problema ng ito? Aware po kayo sa mga nangyaring ganito? Sorry, Mr. Chair. I am also in the fireworks uh, Senate hearing. May I may I hear it again, please, Mr. Chair? Itong, uh, itong uh, panukalang batas ni Senator Lapid, an act providing measures to protect individuals engaged in food and grocery delivery services. Kasi may mga riders pala na uh, linoloko o dahil nag-order may nag-order and then sila ang magdi-deliver sila pa lang nag-advance pala yung mga yan ang ibang iba dyan ang nag-advance so, familiar po kayo sa pangyayaring ito at ano po ang uh, ginawa na ng DTI in the absence of this uh, law yes Mr. Chair Mr. Chair there have been uh, some complaints uh, involving these schemes, yung uh, DVU schemes na ginagawa ng ibang sellers. Kaya we issued advisories, Mr. Chair, to the public na kung pwede, uh, when they, pagka yung seller naman kasi, in this case, sir, um, yung seller naman ang nadideceive. To, so we made advisories to make sure to take uh, screenshots of the calls that were made or the text messages that were sent to them by the uh, purported buyer. Tapos, uh, if they are willing and ready to execute a sworn sworn affidavit, Mr. Chair, a sworn statement uh, to this effect, they can bring it to the DTI. Meron po talagang mga ganyang complaints, Mr. Chair. It It's happening. So, anong, if, if there anong, is... Anong law ang gamit nyo to resolve it? Anong law ginagamit nyo to resolve Actually, civil code na lang, Mr. Chair. Fairness. Uh, uh, fairness and equity provisions of the civil code right now. So if there is going to be a bill that will be uh, uh, submitted or proposed for this one to cover such activities, Mr. Chair, we will fully support it. And we're willing to submit also our inputs, Mr. Chair, so that we can somehow perfect the bill to make it apply uh, fully to these actions or activities, Mr. Chair. Ito kasi, ah, Senator Lapid, mayroon kayo sasabihin, sir? Nakamute ka, sir. Senator Lapid, nakamute ka. Na Please unmute, okay. Oh, nagpapasalamat lang kay uh, Sir Ruth Castello na uh, mabigyan ng pansin. Maraming maraming salamat. Sir, Sir, iba itong kay, at itong panukalang batas ni Senator Lapid, iba ito, protection talaga ito sa rider. Rider, kasi yung ang, ang kung, kung meron kang kung magnenegosyo ka ng food or grocery delivery service itong sabi ng panukalang batas na to siguraduhin mo may sistema ka to reimburse immediately yung rider mo kung maloko man ng ganito so so napakahalaga po nito uh, at Yusek Ruth ang nagre-reklamo ba sa inyo tungkol sa ganitong kaso mga rider so Rider o yung mayari ng uh, delivery service? Chair, I'm so sorry. Next, uh, sir? Resource person ka ba sa kabila? Yes, sir. I'm going to make the presentation now, sir. I'm so oh. sorry. Sige, okay na, okay na. But at least, uh, importante itong bill na to kasi it addresses the rider's uh, concern. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. We wish you all the best of fireworks. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. My apologies, sir. I'm ba, so sorry. Uh, and, and dito and ba? Mr. Ano, Ch Mr. Food Chair. Food delivery. Yes, yes. Sino to? Sir, this is Asik Jean, Mr. sir. Mr. Chair? Mr. Uh, Chair? Uh, 
Sa As share? Sir, siguro pwede ko lang susugan yung kay Yusek Ruth. Um, sir, kasi po, um, uh, I would maybe make a recommendation since the committee also po, sir, is the uh, is also pursuing the Internet Transactions Act. Baka po pwedeng maisama na rin po yung bill ni, ni, ni Senator Lapid um, regarding po sa ride hailing. Um, I wish to report, sir, that um, uh, the, the issue of ride hailing, ito pong mga complaints uh, na parang abuses naman ho ng consumer side. Uh, this was reflected, sir, mm -hmm. in the in the house version, sir. Um, so meron din pong provision dun sa house version na nag, nag, nagbibigay po ng mga obligations of ride hailing providers. At saka nagsasabi po sa mga consumers na it, it will be un, 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 unlawful for consumers of ride hailing services to ito po yung mga sinabi po kanina yung nagka-cancel ng confirmed orders and all that. So my suggestion, Mr. Chair, is perhaps if the committee can maybe uh, incorporate um, the some of the provisions in the proposed bill, sir, of Senator um, uh, Lapid, sir, um, in the Internet Transactions Act, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay yung idea. Do, yung related sa... Uh, directly related sa uh, use of the internet. But yes, the, sir. The other concept sa bill, na may, ito nga ang, it's, sa tingin ko ito yung pinakamahalaga, eh, that the, the uh, food and grocery delivery service business must establish an, an automatic reimbursement system, which is not really... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Copy that. Uh, copy that. Oh, yes, sir. Yun, pwede, natin, pwede na natin kaagad di ano yun, kasi it, ad, it, it answers... It answers a uh, recent phenomenon that uh, we have seen, eh? uh, unfair and uh, hurtful to these riders who are only making a uh, living. Magkano ba kinikita nito mga to, uh, yung mga riders natin uh, every day? Si mga minimum wage din, mga ganon? Sir, nandito po yata si Grab Food. Nakita ko rin sila. Nandito ba sila? Oh, uh, sige, Food Panda wants to add Grab. Do you have yes. any, ano? Who, who are here? Who are present? Please uh, give us your name. Uh, Chair, uh, at Attorney Nika Hosaka po from Grab. Uh, yes, uh, Attorney Nika. Yes po, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you so much po no, for the chance for us to comment on this bill. Actually, Chair, um, as you have noted, um, our this bill po, we saw that this was uh, passed in um, July 2020. And since then, there have been several um, similar versions din po in the House. And we have manifested that Grab has actually changed its policy. Ang Grab po, um, as of August 2020, um, there is no longer an advance that is done by the riders. In fact, um, we slowly rolled it out po. Nag-start po kami, no? gradual po yan, na wherein our merchant partners, o yung pong mga restaurants, for example, diretso na po ang payment sa kanila ng mga nag-order. Wala na pong um, nilalabas na, na pera or wala na pong ina-advance ang ating mga riders. And in fact, in the event po na merong, for example, na hindi po uh, nag-claim ng kanilang order or yung tinatawag po nating no-show, ito pong mga consumer na ito or mga user na to ay nagkakaroon po sila ng penalty because we acknowledge po iba po talaga yung service na ginagawa ng ating mga rider partners. And kung sila man po ay um, yung effort and time nga po no, na kanilang ginag, na binubuhos and then there are certain okay, well, what I mentioned fully compensated po ang ating mga riders wala po silang um, nilalabas and ang ating pong mga consumers naman ay nagkakaroon ng corresponding penalty So, uh, Attorney Nika Kailan kailan nagbago yung policy? When did it start na hindi na hindi na nag advance ang rider? When? It's it started po, we started our first roll out in August 2020. And then dahan-dahan po yan no, nag-start po kami for a small percentage of merchant partners and then dahan-dahan po hanggang umabot po tayo sa 
100% ngayon po, no, uh, meron na po tayo na ang ating mga merchant partners, diretso na po ang payment sa kanila. Wala na po yung inaabono ng mga rider. Oh, okay, paano naman yung mga nabiktima noon? Uh, did, did you make sure naman na hindi nila sa bulsa nila na, na hindi yung bulsa nila yung nasaktan? Yes, yes po, um, uh, Mr. Chair. Actually, ang ating pong policy, no, part po ito ng onboarding training ng ating mga riders, every time meron po silang na-encounter na no-show na tinatawag nga po natin, meron po silang reimbursement um, process. Mabilis lang po yun, within hours, they are fully reimbursed. Um, as long as meron po silang na-file na report, um, wala naman po kasi tayong tinatawag na cancellation sa app natin. Pag na, nabigay na po ang order, bawal na pong ma-cancel. Nakita po natin dati, ang nangyayari lamang, hindi po kiniklaim. Hindi nga na-cancel, pero hindi uh, hindi nakiklaim, ibang bahay yung napupuntahan. Okay. So, hindi ba does... damage, at, 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 hindi ba damage na ng buyer yon Kung, kasi, di ba, bayad na siya sa credit card, supposed to be? Opo. So, may mga, yung pong dating, dating process Ay, na, opo, the old process na hindi pa po automatic na debited ang consumer, and yun po yung nag advance pa po ang rider, no, back in uh, last year po, na early last year, ang grab po, ang nag reimburse 100% doon sa rider. But since then nga po, napalitan na ang ating proseso, um, diretso na po ang payment sa merchant. Wala na pong inaabono ang ating rider. At, at wala, wala namang, wala namang na, nalimutan o nakaligtaan na rider ha, na lahat na reimburse. Ha? Opo, lahat po as long as uh, na-file po nila itong report na ito, lahat po sila ay 100% reimbursed uh, within a matter of hours po from the filing of the reimbursement. Mag paano paano sinisweldohan ba ito mga riders? Are, are they employees uh, of the of Grab? Um, no sir, they're actually um, independent contractors. Most of them po talaga ay uh, part-timers. Yung pong minsan may uh, iba po silang job tapos pang dagdag lang po itong sa Grab or sometimes um, I see that Food Panda is here. Uh, sila po ay nagmumultay up. Nagde-deliver po para sa Grab, nagde-deliver din po for Food Panda. So, there's no exclusivity po, Mr. Chair. And the way that they earn depends po on their number of completed deliveries on top of um, incentives that are given to them by the company. So, nagkakaroon din po yung um, monetary incentives sa kanila on top of whatever they earn during the delivery period. And we've seen po some data no, na nakakatuwa nga po na itong mga delivery partners na to sometimes nakaka-take um, home po sila ng above the minimum wage. So, uh, yun po yung nakikita natin na um, advantage din sa kanila and they're able to earn that livelihood. So, thank you to Grab. Uh, how about uh, Food Panda? Uh, I think Miss Rose Romero was raising her hand uh, earlier. Yes, yeah. po, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Apo, Rose Romero po from Food Panda Philippines. Um, first of all, thank you po for inviting us uh, to this public hearing. Um, uh, with regard po sa Food Panda, we just want to um, mention po that actually Food Panda, ever since po when Food Panda operated, the riders never uh, advanced the cash ever since po. So um, sa Food Panda po, um, the system is we have um, uh, a tablet device that is provided to our partner establishments and then yun po yung kumukuha ng orders na nakuko na binibigay or binabato ng app um na orders ng customers and from there diretso po ni prepare uh, so hindi na kailangan pumunta ng rider doon para mag-order or even magbayad yun po so in our case um the cash advance of riders is really not applicable um and in addition lang sir we just also want to manifest na um with the current e-commerce um uh, setup now or with the new e-commerce platforms meron din pong ibang mga sources of fraud orders na nangyayari fraudulent transactions and um 
some are from the customers but also we also take note that from our experience meron din pong nanggagaling din sa mga riders din and also um siguro members of some of the establishment so um with regard to this bill uh, we hope that the bill will have provisions that will provide protection to all players in the uh, in the industry or in the community of users, such as the platform providers, the merchants, the um, the riders, and the and the consumers. Yan po. Ma, Miss Romero, I, I, I'm sure pagka I'm sure pagka may nag-order sa food panda and then hindi umabot because of the fault or anong tawag mo doon, misbe misbehavior of your driver, I'm sure na meron na kayong sistema to satisfy the customer, hindi ba? Uh, yes po, yes sir. Kasi otherwise masisira kayo eh. So yes, uh -oh. it's either you make sure na a substitute delivery will be made or the amount the paid is returned, yes. di ba? So, yes. Yes, sir. Opo, opo. Kahit walang, uh, ito, kahit walang batas, gagawin ninyo yun eh. Opo, yun na po yung oh. setup ngayon. Uh, and also, sir, we just want to take note then na pagdating po sa mga fraud orders, whether committed by the consumer or the rider, it's actually the company who bears the cost of that order. So, kami na po yung nagbabayad ay sa, sa merchant kahit hindi na-deliver yung, yung order. Oo, oh, oo. Oh. Uh, uh, basta ang statement mo is from the very start sa Food Panda, hindi na-victimize ang mga drivers ninyo because you never required them from the very start to advance. Yes, sir. So, uh, so okay yun. Kasi kahit na no-show or ano, uh, the driver gets his, uh, ano ba tawag mo doon, commission on, on the sale? Apo. Apo. Uh, their fee. Diba? Their fee. Uh, their fee. Kahit na... Oh, they will get their fee and then no damage to their pockets kasi wala naman silang money out. Yes, sir. Okay, so, ang, ta ang, ang tanong ngayon, ilan ba ang food delivery services ang meron dito sa bansa? Sino ba makasagot nun? And then, are they all like Food Panda or are, are they all like Grab which already improved on uh, its system? So, si uh, can, can any of our resource persons uh, answer, uh, uh, answer me? Uh, siguro... Uh, DTI, ano, ano ba records natin? How many, how many, ano bang technical name nitong negosyong ito? Uh, food and Grocery food. Delivery Service uh -huh. of companies Mr. or establishments do we have? Uh, sige, uh, Asek, uh, Pacheco? Yeah, sir, uh, I believe we will have to get back, sir, to the committee for the exact number of the la the last-minute delivery services and as well as most specifically, sir, dito po sa food. Uh, sir, may we request a little bit more time lang. We'll, we'll revert to the committee, Mr. Chair. Kasi, okay, kasi if that, there are two manifestations here, pero malay mo, sige pa rin eh. So, yes, we, we still have to do this. Uh, we still have to make, to enact a law. Tapos, it will no longer affect yung mga advanced, ano na, like kunyari, Food Panda never does it. So, uh, even though there is a law, Ms. Romero, ano na kayo, compliant na kayo, hindi ba? Pero we're, we're doing this to the non-compliant kasi baka may mga nabibiktimize pa na riders dyan eh. So, any other comment? Senator, Senator Lapid, okay, na okay ba yung mga narinig mo sa Food Panda at sa Grab? Okay na yan. Uh, maraming salamat. Uh, sir, uh, yun, nga, yun lang. Salamat. So, the chairman. The uh, chairman. Uh, laban consumer, yes. Attorney, di ba giba? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, may double check na ako kay Ms. Osaka ba? O Grab? Osaka? All right. Uh, yes, you information mo that as early as August, wala na yung uh, the rider advancing payment. Are you referring to the Pabili, Pabili feature of Grab? Uh, no, sir. Uh, the Pabili feature po is different. Um, we are only referring po doon sa ating Grab food delivery service. Yung pong Pabili is actually a concierge service whereby uh, the user po, kung meron po silang gustong any item, na ipabili, uh, kung kunari po it's not available on the app, 
hindi po nila nakikita yung pagkain, let's say on the app, gusto po nila itong magpabili. Yun po, um, ang feature po na yan, dahil depende po yung amount or um, presyo ng bagay na ipapabili nila, iba po siya. Iba po yung system niya. Yeah, but in the sense that the rider advances the money, pareho lang sa pabili, hindi ba? That's the feature po of pabili. Para po yeah, you that's are the feature pabili. Yes, opo. Parang you are Kasi ako, suki ako ng pabili eh. Uh, oh. 300 shares a day. Uh, um, magpapabili ako, no? Kasi uh, yes, uh, some merchant uh, would have, you have difficulty directly buying from the merchant. And then, i-delivery mo na lang sa Grab, Lalamob, or Speedy, no? And Food Panda. So, I think you have to explain that to the chairman that Teka, oh, so teka, teka. So, well, I, yeah. I understand that, Papanyero. So, so Grab, ha, Grab has another business na you have you have also a rider or driver where 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 the rider or driver advances the money. Opo, but this is po um like what I mentioned earlier, sir, uh, Mr. Chair. Ito po ay yung tinatawag nating pabili feature or concierge na feature po natin. Concierge, yeah. Uh, yes, non food, po, non food. Non-food or food? Hello? Non-food? Non-food oh. non Okay. I disagree. I disagree to chairman. I, I huh? buy food through Pabili. A food ah, okay. Pwede pala food. Oh. Paano nga ma'am, ma'am, ma ma yung, yung, oh, yung, yung, yung fraudulent practices nga, which, which are question, made questionable sa food delivery, gawin sa non-food. Uh, kawawa, kawawa did yung driver? Correct. Okay. Okay. Ano ko po yung um, process po nung sa pabili? Um, yung sa food po kasi, because we are already able to identify magkano po yung pagkain or yung pong order, uh, alam na po natin yung money or sorry, yung value that will now go straight to the merchant. Dito po sa pabili service, for example, um, kung yung pong sa example po ni Attorney Vic Dimagiba na meron po siyang pinapabiling pagkain, and let's say wala po yun sa ating Grab Food app, yung pong presyo ng pagkain ay madedetermine po after pa. Hindi po siya nakalagay na po dun sa menu sa Grab Food. So yun po, um, sa pabili service po natin, opo, napansin po namin actually sir, especially nung lockdown, um, it was very crucial ito pong pabili service kasi may mga nagpapabili po sa Mercury Drugstore, for example, yung pong hindi na po mga lumalabas ng bahay, they avail of the pabili service uh, to get their essentials. Tapos dun lang po, pagdating nila sa drugstore, minsan po text na nila yung um, nagpapabili, ma'am, ito po yung total, ito po yung picture ng inyong resibo. So yun po ngayon ang ina-advance ng ating mga rider. Um, opo, uh, yun po yung kanilang inaabono kasi nga po hindi pa po fix ang presyo. So far po, no, sa atin namang um, pag-check ng paggamit nitong pabili service na ito, because it is, like what I earlier mentioned, there is no fix nga po na amount that's earlier determined once the service is booked, um, the advancing of the rider po ay fully nababayaran naman po ng ating mga consumers. Wala pa naman po kaming incidents na um, no-show or naka-cancel. Um, but again, because this is a concierge service nga po para tayong nag-utos, no? para bumili on your on your behalf, um, in any untoward incident po, Grab again is able to fully reimburse um, riders kung meron po sa kanila na mga hindi po fully nababayaran. Pero based nga po sa aming experience dito sa ating pabili service, hindi po kami nakaka-encounter pa ng mga ganong reports po. Okay. Okay. But, but you have that policy in place. Ang gusto mong sabihin. Yes, yes, okay. yes Mr. Chair. Ma ano instruction nyo sa rider nyo? May cap? May cap ang halagang i-advance niya? What, yes. what, is, what is the Opo. cap? Tama po yan. Um, meron pong cap na, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chair, it's around 1,000. Um, ah, 1, meron pong Opo, meron po tayong um, binibigay na message din po sa ating mga um, users um, kung ano po yung kanilang ipapabili. Dapat po hindi lalampas dun sa amount na um, allowed i-advance ng rider natin. 
Okay, pero yung, yung idea, yung rational behind the lapid bill, applicable din ha, sa, sa, <laughs> sa, sa sistema <laughs> ng lapid na kahit na non-food. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I will ask the permission of the author, uh, Senator Lapid, if we can expand uh, the coverage of his bill kasi uh, food and grocery delivery ito. So, yung, yung pabili is even non-grocery, ma'am, no? Uh, attorney Nika, non-grocery. Yes po, pwede rin oh. po non-grocery. So, uh, ano, uh, ano, Senator Lapid, eh, ano natin, kasi para, para kang, parang meron kang na, na pinpoint na, ano eh, na problem, na hindi lang pala sa food eh. Uh, ka... Sana all. All. <laughs> so, sa lahat, uh, sa lahat ng applicable, gawin na lang nga natin. Oh, at any rate, tama, tama, tama. at any rate, si Grab naman, if you have the correct policies, uh, you, the law is, you should not fear the law kasi the, the policy is there. Eh. Meron na kayong system eh. Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, okay. so, the system is in place po. And uh, system, actually, yes, we're already implementing po the system to protect uh, both parties po. Correct. So we, rider. Uh, so we are really, we are really after the non-compliant. Those who... Where, where there are there are victims na uh, riders who feel that they are victims dun tayo and it's okay so we'll make it by so we have the national privacy commission ba uh, uh, who will uh, who will who will comment uh any rasa dali any rasa dali ayo sir attorney erlene lumanog po siya yes attorney lumanog yes Yes, good morning po, Mr. Chair. So, the National Privacy Commission manifests our support and acknowledge the importance of this bill set um, penned by Senator Lapid, especially in the lives of our riders and in this, specifically in this time of pandemic. So, we are prepared po, Mr. Chair, to submit our position paper after this hearing, but please just allow me to uh, manifest some of our comments for the for the benefit of the body. So number one, Mr. Chair, we would like to recommend that for the Know Your Customer Rules, um, service providers should use an appropriate and um, secure verification system. Um, this will protect the customers and make sure that the personal information that is being provided is only limited to the KYC as well as fraud prevention. And we would also like to emphasize that that um, the service providers need to comply with the provisions of the Data Privacy Act and as well set a period for retention of the personal information that is being collected for the use of this KYC. And yes, that is all, Mr. Chair. Um, please just allow us to um, provide for our position paper after this meeting. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Panera. Uh uh, I suggest meron time message because it's a chat na directly to me. You just about food panda can you just deliver can you send that can you send that message for food panda to miss romero okay so that she will she will be aware of the complaint uh, okay so we will uh, any other comments pala? any other comments on 1677 the bill of senator lapid why uh our pnp uh, ano bang uh comsec why did we invite the PNP for what bill? Sir, sa deal po ni Senator Binay. Ah, sa susunod, sa senior citizens. Okay. Yeah. okay, so... Okay, so let's fast track this. Kasi very timely, very re relevant. Uh, even after the pandemic, may relevant to kasi nasanay na tayo sa online eh. Uh, uh, online services. And then with the permission of the author... We will go beyond food and grocery delivery. Lahat ng, na, lahat ng delivery services na applicable ito na na-victimize yung mga riders. I, I, ano na natin. In the TW, uh, T, we will schedule immediately a TWG, uh, Attorney J, uh, the Technical Working Group, uh, Jingle. Thumbs yes, up. Okay, so th thank you very much uh, for your participation in 1677. Uh, so, yeah, let's, uh, so, so let's go to the topic where uh, the PNP has been invited para ano sila? Uh, they might have something to do. Okay, so uh, Senate Bill 1376, uh, the Bill of Senator Binay, Senior Citizens Fraud Education Act. 
So any any comments? So let's give uh, let me give the floor to the uh, uh, PNP. We have here Police Colonel Abrenica. Yes, sir. Nakamute ka, sir. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, with me right now is a representative from Anti-Cyber Crime Group, Police Colonel Gangona, and uh, Attorney uh, Gerald Prieto of the PNP Legal Service. Uh, for your information, Mr. Chair, the Philippine National Police supports the Senate Bill Number uh, 1376, otherwise known as the Senior Citizens Fraud Education Act, which seeks to protect and promote the welfare of senior citizens by educating them, their families, their caregivers, and the public on how to identify and combat fraudulent uh, activities. All the advanced technology helps development in the economy, but when you use the bad elements of society, it may lead to the misfortune of senior citizens who may be easy target and victims due to their difficulty to adapt to it. With a proactive measure that may be provided by the proposed bill, such as the periodical dissemination of information to the senior citizens, including the establishment of websites to serve as a source of information for senior citizens, their families and caregivers, on a method of fraudulent activities and, upon inquiry, provide them with a history of fraud committed by a particular entity of or individual based on law enforcement records. The objective to eradicate the senior citizens to secure them from fraudulent transaction would be ensured. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Philippine National Police over the years has been anticipating its proactive instance in line with the PNP Patrol Plan 2030 roadmap to have a highly capable, effective, and credible police service working in partnership with the, respective com with the responsive community towards the attainment of a safer place to live, work, and do business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Any other uh, comments? DOJ is the DOJ uh, here, Department of Justice. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Sino po ito? Um, State Council Robles, po, sir, from DOJ. Ah, uh, uh, State Council Robles. You also wanted to comment on the Lapid Bill, ba hindi? Uh, um, sir, another state council is signed for that ah, particular okay, sir. bill. Okay, pahabol na lang natin yung the other state council. Pero mauna ka na, ma'am, on uh, the B9 bill on uh, senior citizens fraud. Yes? Yeah. Attorney okay. Robles. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, sir, the department has yet to submit its official position paper. Once available, we will forward it to the committee for its consideration. Um, however, as an initial comment, sir, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we, we interpose no objection to the passage of the subject bill, which appears to be in complete agreement with <clears throat> Section 4, Article 15 of the Constitution. Um, however, sir, we just would like to suggest for the inclusion of the PNP and the National Commission of Senior Citizens to be included as one of the agencies to be consulted by the DTI. That's all, Your Honor. Okay, so in the two two additional agencies in the consultation. So thank you, Panera. Oh, how about the state council who came here for uh, the Lapid Bill? We can still uh, listen to him or her. Good morning, Mr. Chair. But sorry, I nalimutan ko nalimutan kita on 1677. Yes. Yes. Good. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. I I'm having. Uh, I'm experiencing a bad internet connection. If the, the committee would allow, we will just send our position on paper. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Anytime. I apologize, sir. Thank you. Uh, how about the NBI? NBI will comment on what bill, uh, Secretary? Sir, the BNA bill, pa. Okay. So, Secretary okay. Agent um, Alonso is here. Um, NBI. Um, yes, go ahead. Um, Agent Baden Francis Alonso. Agent, uh, Mr. Chair, good morning. Um, Agent Baden Francis Alonso for the National Bureau of Investigation currently assigned in the Cyber Crime Division. So we have received the invitation yesterday, Mr. Chair, and upon um, 
reading of the proposed uh, bill, we do agree. Um, we will support for the implementation and into the technical working group, sir, of the said bill. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Question to ano, ito, general question to our law enforcement agencies, PNP and uh, NBI. Uh, com compared to the rest of the population, do senior citizens uh, really uh, experience um, more crimes or fraudulent acts perpetrated against them? Or, are, in other words, are the senior citizens? uh really the target of uh fraudsters and uh, swindlers compared to the rest of the population say any any comment out of ano to, parang parang out of curiosity colonel yes colonel labrenica national police yes sir from the philippine from the philippine national police sir we have two we are two units here first is the cidg so for the CIDG, sir, uh, from 2012 to 2019, sir, uh, nag-record po kami ng uh, victim uh, based sa aming anti-fraud na 15 lang po senior citizens na nabiktima ng, uh, uh, ng ganitong scheme. But then, uh, na -create po, mayroon pong na-create na, na anti-cyber crime sa Philippine National Police and more those cases na refer na sa kanila. But then from 2017 to 2020, Noong 2017 po, may data po sila na 14 incidents. And then 2018 po, mayroon po silang 37. 2019, mayroon po silang 14. Noong 2020, mayroon po silang 47. A total of 112 incidents po, uh, victimizing those uh, senior citizens. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Yes, yes. Yes, I am from the Department of Health, Dr. Ah, yes, yes, I I am responsible for the healthy aging, healthy and productive aging of the Department of Health, and uh, uh, we have noted or, or there are we uh, because uh yes, uh, we really support for the bill, um um uh, Mr. Uh, is it Ma'am Binlu? There are a lot of information that we got from the families. Yes. Okay. Department of Health po, sir. Yes, uh, ulitin mo ma'am kasi you, Hello, you, sir. Uh -oh. your signal is choppy. Can you, can you repeat? Sige, from the top. What did you say, ma'am, from Sorry. the beginning? Uh oh, yes. Um, the Department of Health. Mr. Chair, uh, am I clear yes, now? Yes, now you're clear. Okay. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chair, we really support for this bill. Uh, being a program manager of this uh, senior citizen, uh, the healthy and productive uh, uh, aging program of the Department of Health. Uh, we have noted that uh, uh, some of our patients or our elderly, especially who are dementia, the patients who have dementia are affected to this kind of youth. In fact, they are abused. They are abused uh, 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 by uh, other people, uh, like, for example, some carers that uh, they are... Uh, paying more or double because uh, these people or these uh, uh, patients or these elderly uh, forgot that um, they have paid more or they, they, uh, they already paid. So um, not only for uh, carers or uh, not only for, uh, uh, for the problems uh, with regards to uh, period, but also, I think uh, abuse of our uh, uh, older person uh, 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 regarding doon sa mga mga ano yon yung mga pinabibili nila po. Thank you po. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you for that, uh, Mambinluan. 
Phil Post. Phil Post is here. Attorney Gonzalez. Yeah, magandang umaga. Naka mute ka sir. Go. Com comes. Okay. Teka. Who is who is going to react from Phil Post, Attorney Gonzales ba? Panyero, if if it's Attorney Gonzales, naka mute ka sir. Yan, okay. At si Agnash lang po kayo paalam sa committee na ito na ang Phil Post po ay uh, nakahandang uh, makipag-ulungan uh, uh, we fully support the implement the uh, approval of this uh, bill at uh, handa kami makipag-ulungan sa mga opisina na para makagawa ng padamang mga uh, Implementing rules and regulations ng po dito. At kung maaari, bigyan kami ng pagkakataon o makapagsabit na aming position paper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You will always have that uh, opportunity. Uh, please, please submit at the soonest possible time. Oh, DTI, yes, you will be the... DTI, any comment? Uh, Yusek Ruth or any of the... Uh, DTI representatives, because you will be the ones to implement this law. You, you love a hotline, uh, DTI, you need to put up a hotline, a website, etc. Uh, currently, po yata nasa kabilang siya. Yusek. Uh, yeah, nasa, uh, nasa fireworks si, si Yusek. Anyway, uh, D DTI will have to implement this uh, bill if it becomes law. So we have Attorney Santos of the PRA. Yes, Attorney Santos. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may I suggest that uh, the amend this kind of amendment should be incorporated into the uh, other amendments to the Consumer Act because I, I think it is a proper fit uh, for the law to uh, to uh, to improve the consumer rights of senior citizens. So I think rather than it's a standalone uh, piece of legislation, it, it can act within the law. Uh, perhaps it would be better if this bill were to be incorporated into the amendment to the Consumer Act. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So thank you, Attorney Santos. Mo, um, I, 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 I agree with you. So in the TWG, we co uh, called for earlier for Senate Bills 756 and 1293, we can join this one, uh, Senate Bill 1376. Okay, and maybe a new chapter. Uh, I think so, yes, Sean. Yeah, a new chapter. Yeah, yeah, a new chapter in the uh, Consumer Act on uh, senior citizens' uh, protection. Special protection for senior citizens. Pwede siguro. So, so we can do this. Uh, we will just ask the permission of Senator B. Nye to do this. Uh, then then if uh, she's okay with this arrangement, we will do a technical working group na kaagad tayo. Three bills. Three bills. Okay. So thank you for that suggestion, uh, Attorney Santos. Okay, and any other comment? So, wala na. So, okay. So, we, we, we can... Uh, ah, yes. Ano, Yusek? Y Yusek? Uh, Mr. Kasper? Chair, just one comment, Mr. Chair, on the Senior Citizens uh, Act. Maybe, Mr. Chair, we can... Uh, how do we call this, Mr. Chair? Um, uh, make stricter uh, regulations on the issuances made by uh, senior citizens' offices. Because a lot of, yes, Mr. Chair, a lot of people who are not senior have the cards and you will see them uh, in in restaurants or in grocery stores using. Mr. Chair, um, uh, I, I personally know of people who have senior citizens cards who are not seniors. So maybe we can uh, make 
uh, impose stricter regulations on this because we understand uh, that it is not fair to the business establishments, Mr. Chair. And of course, it is um, to begin with a uh, fraudulent act, Mr. Chair. Can can uh, during the technical wor working group can we look at this angle, please? Uh, uh, so committee secretary and the, and the staff, tignan natin. Tama yun. Pero ito na lang masasabi ko, you sec sa mga may senior citizens who are not yet seniors. They, I, I, ibig sabihin nun, they, they, their looks justify the, the card. Ha? Hindi, <laughs> 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 ininsulto nila sarili nila, hindi ba? <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you sec? Oh, okay, na. okay. So, so that's another. I don't know. That's another angle. Uh, take a look if it's if it if it properly belongs to our committee or to the bill uh, under consideration. Okay, and and if not, then we have to our our office na lang will uh, will take up the issue. You secret and file the the proper bill. If not, ano? Okay, so we now proceed. We now proceed. Okay, so we now go to the. Let's go to Senate Bill Number Five Twenty, the Anti Pyramiding Act, filed by Majority Leader Subiri. Recommendation. Any, any comments? Any comments? So, who did we invite Comsec for five twenty? Hmm? Uh, direct selling. We have here the we have uh, Mr. Sarmiento of the Direct Selling Association of the Philippines. Yes, sir. So if, 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 if you have comments, sir, if you have comments. Time, sabi ni Ella. Kailangan daw gumamit. Thank you. Ah wait, wait. Si Mama Ella na po yung nagtutulong. Is may nakikimut po ng ano ng. Can we look for the the source of the sound? Sam, okay na? Okay na? Okay na? Okay, uh, okay na po, sir. Okay na po. Mr. Sarmiento, you can, you can now unmute, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Direct Selling Association of the Philippines fully supports Bill Number 520 of Senator Zubiri. Uh, the bill is clearly meant to protect, number one, the general public against pyramid scams, Alam naman po natin that we have millions of Filipinos who have been victimized of their hard-earned income to the tune of over 100 billion pesos over the past years. No? Equally important, the bill is meant to protect the over 5 million Filipinos who are engaged in legitimate direct selling. Uh, that is one out of every five Filipino families. No? Ito po yung mga micro-entrepreneurs natin and we need to protect them, especially their livelihood. Unfortunately, the Consumer Act of the Philippines does not have adequate provisions on pyramiding. That is why Bill 520 is important, primarily for three reasons. Now, number one, Bill number 520 clearly defines pyramid schemes and differentiates them from legitimate direct selling. Number two, it establishes mechanism for government agencies such as DTI and SEC to monitor companies categorized under direct selling and therefore they can be more proactive in running after pyramid scams. And number three, the bill imposes stiffer penalties. So for these reasons, Mr. Chair, we fully support bill number 520. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mara, marami pa ba sir na ganito? Marami pa? Mga 
pyramiding pyramiding scams but but these pyramiding scams are definitely not registered no so yeah. so they just try to convince people uh, to join uh, mr chair yung iba po hindi registered pero meron ding iba registered no uh, ngayon ang scheme nila more sophisticated no they uh, uh, guise themselves as legitimate direct selling and network marketing pero ang real uh, objective nila is to get investments no from uh, from people promising them you know get rich quick schemes and uh, so a lot of people are victimized ang akala ng public they are legitimate direct selling pero ay yung pala pyramid scams no so it is very important na talagang ma ma distinguish yung kanilang compensation plan if they are legitimate or pyramiding uh, you, you you are you are sir a direct selling association of the philippines oh, how do you how do you uh, guard against the a, a pyramiding uh, s- uh, scheme masquerading as a direct selling association and then applying to join your organization paano niyo po malalaman kami po, Mr. Chair, we have what we call the eight-point test. No? Uh, lahat ng nag apply na direct selling companies, they undergo this rigid uh, test to make sure that they are compliant. Ito pong eight-point test na to is consistent with DTI Administrative Order Number 8, uh, which is the implementing guidelines on uh, pyramid scams. So yan po, lahat ng nag apply na member we scrutinize them and in fact we have rejected many applicants no kasi we want to protect the uh, industry and the legitimate direct sellers mr chair oh masisira kayo pag mahaluan talaga kayo ng pyramid so you mentioned DTA admin number 8 so yung you know, are all the principles or concepts in uh, uh, DTA admin number 8 captured in Senate Bill 520 or, or and and does the Senate Bill add add more anong tawag mo doon, uh, criteria uh, on determining which what is a pyramiding scheme and what is a legitimate multi-level marketing scheme um, Mr. Chair yung uh, DTI administrative order na yon is uh, 2002 no? So a lot of these pyramid scams have evolved over the years. And uh, this new bill, Bill Number 520, uh, includes uh, additional definitions and attributes. Uh, it includes indicators and parameters on how to better identify pyramid schemes, Mr. Chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and captured ja. I mean, it, it, it will capture now the, the latest... Uh, latest manifestation of uh, pyramid schemes yes mr chair capture you're, you're confident ah na huli huli mauhuli natin using using yes. the te- using the test in uh, senate bill number 520 so yes you're confident mr chair thank you for that mr sarmiento so we also have sec for senate bill 520 Uh, SEC and and uh, DOJ also for 520. Who, who is ready? Who's in on the Mauna? Mr. Pipito is. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Attorney okay. Leonardo representing. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Get a, a sec, Mona Sec. Attorney a Director Leonardo. Yes, of Sec. Uh, from the Enforcement and Investor Protection Department. We fully support uh, this measure, uh, Mr. Chair. And in fact, uh, the SEC has been active in its enforcement actions against those uh, who are propagating these schemes. Although, sa amin po, Mr. Chair, what we do implement is the Securities Regulation Code. Uh, nagiging uh, sophisticated na nga po uh, yung mga scammers, uh, gaya po ng tinabi ng ating colleague na si Mr. Sarmento, na talagang uh, ina- ano, pinapakita nila may produkto kami but uh, ranged against the so-called uh, eight-point test ng DSAP. 
eh maliwanag po yung recruitment aspect at napakataas po ng kanilang mga product lines. You have to load inventory na sa tingin mo wala ka namang pangangailangan doon eh. Ang essential is sasali sila uh, to the scheme because of the potential profits, mga bonuses po. Now, itong mga ganito pong uh, uh, scheme po ay maaring uh, makapag-expose uh, uh, sa kanila sa dalawang violation. Number one, currently, under the uh, Consumer Act of the Philippines in Section 53, it is... Uh, prohibited yung mga chain distribution plan at pyramiding schemes. But at the same time, kung uh, present naman po yung mga elemento ng offering of securities through the investment contracts, eh papasok naman po ang SEC. And meron pong mga kahit na registered SEC and DTI uh, registered entities na po ang uh, na subject po sa ating enforcement actions gaya ng pag-issue ng uh, advisories and cease and desist orders including criminal case, Mr. Chair. But uh, we fully support this measure that will try to strengthen the powers of the DTI at para masugpo na rin po itong mga ganitong klaseng investment scams. It, it, uh, Director, ito, ito yung isang area na marami na, marami na rin nakasuhan, di ba? Marami na nakasuan and I think marami na rin na convict, dama ba? Uh, for engaging in uh, pyramiding? Opo, uh, but uh, yun po, yung from sa side naman po namin, uh, securities regulation code. But yun nga, yung concept, pyramiding and investment fraud, nagahalo po yun eh. So... Marami rin na yeah, tayo because, nga. Because if they don't sell an item, they sell a financial uh, something, eh? a finans uh, so-called financial document. Di pasok sa inyo yun, right? Sec yun, di ba? Opo, yung mga offers of investments, oh, mga oh, investment compensation and, plans. And yung return na too, too good to believe na returns, di ba? Yun yun? Uh, Tama po kayo doon. That, that's uh, a security. Yes, that's, that's, that's technically offering a security, therefore under SEC. And then marami na nakasuhan dito and I, I think ma, marami na rin na convict and I think mahaba ang mga sentensya rito. Tama? Uh, yes po, Mr. Chair. Uh, maximum of 20, 21 years of imprisonment. Oh, tama. So, pero, pero meron pa rin. Marami pa rin? <laughs> marami po, uh, Mr. Chair. Especially uh, nowadays, ano na po sila eh, uh, purely online, social media. It's very easy to uh, propagate or foment this kind of scams. Kaya kailangan po natin ng protection uh, ng ating mga kababayan. Uh, yung iba po, uh, wala nung exposure. And then meron naman po ring iba na talagang they know how the system works. Kasi daw, pinamid, unahan, uh, they, they uh, emphasize yung positioning. Tapos eventually magko-collapse po eh. Kawawa po yung nasa hindi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tama, tama. Yan naman yung reason na talagang bawal ito because uh, walang produkto. Ang inahabol lang eh, uh, ma maisahan para pagdating ng pagka-collapse, kawawa yung may hawak ng mga holding the bag or holding the hot potato. So, yan po ang, yan po ang reason bakit uh, talagang the policy of the law is talagang pagbawalan po ito. Uh, so we have thank you uh, director uh, thank you director uh, director uh, Leonardo from a consumer group the Na Na nationwide association of consumers Mr. Piping Pipito yes sir uh, yes uh, thank you Mr. Chair uh, I am Jose Pipito from the nationwide association of consumers our organization was organized way back in 1994 and uh, the, one of the first things that we have engaged ourselves is running after pyramid scams because mid you will remember that in mid 1990s na proliferate ang maraming nagpipiramiding they were they were and and uh, this this these companies that were using pyramiding scams uh, schemes Mga registered companies ito, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, with SAC. Ang, ang problema nito, 
the religious leader that in Compania. But the thing is, they never, they never discussed with the regulatory agencies, even with DTI, kung paano mag-operate, maano ang marketing strategies, schemes nila. So dapat, yung marketing schemes, i-reveal din yan sa, sa regulatory agencies. No, wala, wala yan eh. So kaya maraming nag, ano, maraming uh, nagpipiramiding. Uh, one of the resources of this, uh, the, the going about the law, is the definition of pyramiding as provided in RA 7394. Ang sinabi kasi doon na as long as, uh, the second portion of the definition, as long as the income does not primarily come from the investment, from the investment of the a uh, new member. Now, uh, we we actually ever since we have been trying to to suggest when when the amendment of the cemetery night for started way back. Na yung definition alisin yung primarily because when you see primarily meaning it can be a small portion of what what the the downline pays. May, may, may go to the recruiter, to the upline, when you say primarily. So uh, we, su we, we suggested that the word primarily should be deleted so that, that no amount should come from the investment of the downlines. Kasi yung, yung, kung ang, ang income doon sa upline comes from the investments of the downline, Pyramiding na yun eh. Naging pyramiding ang scheme na yun. So we, 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 were, uh, we were suggesting, and uh, I don't know kung, uh, kung na-adapt, ayawag ko dito sa bago kung ang, ang definition, wala na yung primarily. It should be, any, any amount that, that comes from the investment of the downline should not be allowed. Kasi pag ilalaman mo yan, pyramiding yan. Now, nung araw, no, going back, Mr. Mr. Chair, doon sa nangyari nung ano, uh, mid-1990s, up to the end of 1990s, we were the ones, uh, we actively were running after pyramiding uh, companies uh, uh, using the pyramiding schemes. Uh, in fact, we wanted, the, we, we went to the, uh, the IJ, uh, we, went, we went to DTI, Unfortunately, at that time, the, the those who, were, who we, we, we talked to at DTI was not very familiar with pyramiding. So what we did was we went to SEC. But it was at SEC that we were able to get actual help so that what we did was supply SEC with the schemes of the, the marketing schemes of these companies and with the help of ECC at the time under the chair, chairmanship of uh, then Attorney Yasai, the late Attorney Yasai, marami kaming napa-stop. Uh, marami kaming operations that uh, SEC issued cease and desist orders. And then so that in early 2000, and, uh, and I mentioned the, you know, the uh, taga DSAP na in 2002 na craft yung pyramiding uh, yung the department order sa pyramiding na we were there we, we, we helped DTI craft it na nandun din yung DSAP nung araw and so we were able to come up with an administrative order uh, about pyramiding and I would like to even say that DSAP Nung araw, mayroon silang dinistribute na, ano eh, na CD about pyramiding. I hope, uh, I hope they, they, are, they still have it and they can, they can revive it and distribute it to, to concerned individuals para malaman kung ano yung pyramiding actually. Kasi magandang pagka uh, ano nila doon sa, uh, sa, sa ano na yun eh, sa, Mr. sa CD na yun. So, yun lang ang, ang ano, Mr. Chair, I hope that the, I hope that uh, this, this bill will pass into law, we will support it, 
so that uh, 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 for at long last, wala nang magpipiramiding. Siguro, ilong niya dito. Yes, sir. We welcome your ano we will we will welcome your position paper on this bill uh, pati yung yeah. pati yung mga recollection mo nung mga <laughs> yeah history or ano pero yeah pero okay, th sir. thank you for pointing out the word primarily andito pa siya it's still here nandiyan pa eh dapat oh, alisin yung sir eh page 3 line 15 kaya nga paki oh. pakisilip pakisilip and give us your position paper it's it's oh. on yeah, uh, we will send you a copy if you still don't have a copy of the bill. It's found on yeah, page yeah. three, line fifteen. So okay, okay. thank you, sir. Uh, the, the staff will send you, sir, so that you can uh, participate in the technical working group. Okay. To to make uh, sure, kasi you. sabi mo critical yung word na yun. Eh. Make sure yes, that yes, the kasi word is na uh, they use this to go around the the definition yeah, okay. of the term pyramid. <laughs> So, thank you, thank you for pointing that out. Kasi chinek ko and dito nga. So we 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 learn we we are learning a lot from you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you. Mr. Chair. Uh, DOJ is the DOJ still online uh, on five twenty Senate Bill five twenty. In in the meantime, Mr. Sarmiento, what can you say about yung primarily? Tama ba yun? Uh, can that serve as the loophole? Ah, yan na pala si uh, Council. But si Mr. Sarmiento muna. Yes, sir. Primarily, yung sinabi ni Mr. Pipito. Yes, Mr. Chair. We're, we're okay with uh, uh, taking out primarily. No, I think that so, will um, make the definition more strict. Uh, At think... iladagdag ko lang, Mr. Chair, na-mention ni uh, Mr. Pipito kanina yung, yung anti-pyramiding uh, education video. In fact, we came up with a new one, with a new version and it has Secretary Ramon Lopez, don't uh, video na yan. It is already available so we can, uh, uh, DTI has, has a copy of this updated video. So thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Nasa YouTube ba yun, DTI? Ilagay nyo sa, sa YouTube. Para, uh, para mapanood na lang ng, 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 ng taong bayan. No? Anyway, anyway. Uh, I still have anyway, my copy of the original. <laughs> original. Uh. Sige, sir, thank you. Anyway, we have now State Council uh, Estrada of the uh, Department uh, of Justice. Tama po ba yun, ma'am? Did... Yes, oh, po, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning. Yes, uh, we just have the following observations. First, on Section 7, on DTI's jurisdiction over prosecution, it seems that um, their jurisdiction is over complaints regarding companies and not necessarily on prosecution, which may be which may be um, which may pertain to law enforcement and not DTI. So that's our first observation. Uh, second, Mr. Chair, we also observe that in the prescriptive period, uh, the prescriptive period in the bill is uh, just five years. However, Mr. Chair, the penalty is 12 years to 20 years, which is akin to reclusion temporal. And uh, maybe, Mr. Chair, uh, we can uh, look into the RPC, particularly Article 90, and um, maybe link it to Article 90, where in the prescriptive period for reclusion temporal is uh, 20 years, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. I, I also noticed that. Did you, did you notice the uh, on page 6, line 13 to 14, uh, making it non-bailable? Uh, yes, uh, so we, we also have to fix that, diba? So we have to fix. But uh, I, at, at, at any rate, at any rate, we can we can see the we can see the intent the, that this be an all out. Yeah, all out war against pyramiding. Yun, yun, I think I think that is the that is the spirit that we get eh, from the bill. Okay, but we we just uh, we just uh, fix some of the some of the uh, ideas in the bill. Okay, so so ano yung Papa State Council Estrada prosec prosecution will not be with the DTI, no? Siya siya, siya yung siya yung Siya yung unang takbuhan, di ba? And then, uh, let's say the DTI determines that it's a pyramiding scheme. DTI should refer it now to uh, DOJ. Tama ba yun? Or DTI will be the complainant before uh, prosecutor's office. Parang ganon, di ba? I think that should be the yes, situation. Uh, 
Okay. Sig- ano lang, sir, siguro, uh, i-refine na lang yung title nung Section 7 kasi medyo misleading siya pag binasa mo yung uh, body nung Section 7, Sir Chair. Thank yes, you. yes. Oh, yung title. Y- yung, yung, okay. yung title kasi over prosecution. Anyway, we will, we will, we will uh, uh, fix the bill uh, knowing the intent or, or, the, or the spirit, the rationale behind the bill. Okay. Meant to be all out war against uh, pyramiding. Okay, so, again, so any other comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we will now uh, form the technical working group for this uh, bill. Uh, and hopefully, the dream of Mr. Pipito, uh, to once and for all, uh, eradicate uh, <laughs> pyramiding schemes joined the joined in by Mr. Sarmiento. No? The, that aspiration, sana magkatotoo. But as mentioned by Director uh, Leonardo, with the use of technology, <laughs> the schemes uh, evolve. So I hope that the, we, can, we will be able to capture uh, even... Uh, even the 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 mutations oh yeah gamitin natin kasi pandemic ngayon the the mutations of uh pyramiding schemes no e capture natin sa TWG so that we can come up with the law which will capture all uh, possible mutations of uh pyramiding schemes okay so thank you for your participation on uh, on this bill uh we now go to our last uh, topic uh, so we have been very efficient in using our time. I think we will be able to end before uh, around 12 noon. So Senate Bill Number 659 on the Used Car Lemon Act filed by Senator Revilla. Any any comments on this? Thank you, Mr. Sarmiento. Thank you for for participating, everybody. Thank you. Any any comment uh, about the retailers association or laban consumer? We have the automotive manufacturers. Wala. Okay, ganito ang gawin natin. Uh, since we will all, there will also be a uh, amendments to the lemon law uh, already filed. We can probably. We can probably reschedule Senate Bill 659 and hear it together with the with a bill amending the uh, Lemon Law. Okay, so yung Lemon Law for brand new car sales, ito naman Senate Bill 659 for used car sales naman ito. Okay, so okay lang ba, Yusek Castello, we will defer 659 para to give the DTI more time then to go over the two bills may anyway related yun your concept of lemon law okay so oh okay, yes so that's that, very generous mr chair thank you thank you thank you so so with that okay so with that uh, i think we have uh, we have finished uh, our agenda for today tama tama lang we have u- uh, used our time efficiently so uh, the chair thanks uh, First of all, Senator Gachalian, and then all of you are present here, Yusek Castello, all uh, my colleagues in government, SEC, DOJ, even Field Post, uh, sino pa ba? Uh, and then from the non govern uh, and even the PNP and NBI pala participated, everybody else, hindi ko na kayo mabanggit lahat. And from the consumer groups, the non-government uh, organizations, thank you, thank you for participating. So, see you in the next... Uh, I'll see you in the te- technical working group meetings and see you in the next uh, hearings of the committee because we have a lot of referrals and we intend to hear uh, all all measures referred to the committee. So, ulitin ko, maraming salamat po for your participation. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good day to all. Our, our hearing is hereby uh, suspended. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.